a review on the AMD Overdrive Utility, the version 4.2.6. If you have an AMD CPU or APU and you want to check it out, see how it runs, get information, tweak it, adjust a whole bunch of things that you would normally do in the BIOS, you can do that through this utility, so it makes things easier, simpler. I have went ahead and installed it in Windows 7, as you can see here. I've got installed a whole bunch of cool hardware on here, which we're going to take a look. As soon as you launch it, of course, you're going to be able to get your CPU information, your memory information, details that you would normally get through the BIOS, you can get quickly through here, and of course, you can further adjust these, and we're going to look at that in a moment. I've got this already overclocked. I did a video on overclocking this CPU, the AMD FX8350. I'm running it at 4.5 gigahertz today, and I've got 8 gigs of um, Patriot uh, memory, which I reviewed separately as well. I'll add links below if you're interested in uh, seeing the reviews on those uh, hardware parts. But to tell you the truth, there's lots of good stuff that you can do in this utility, and there's some stuff that I usually don't use. Be warned, though, whatever you do in here, if you're not sure, you know, don't do it because you could damage your machine. Obviously, that's why AMD gives you this warning, okay? Especially if you're overclocking and trying to tweak things and you're not sure. This is for power users, a lot of this stuff. But there's a lot of things in here that you can do that are safe and are harmless, okay? So I'm going to show you those in a moment. Now, other than this basic screen that shows you the uh, details here, we're going to go into the status monitor. I use this. It gives me temperature readings. It gives me a lot of information on the voltage. And um, I like to uh, compare, basically, results. Now, you can see the temperatures are quite low, about 14 degrees Celsius. It fluctuates up to 22. Well, that's because my room is freezing cold. I'm 17 degrees Celsius, the ambient temperature. That's about 64 Fahrenheit. I am freezing cold in here. I am using a liquid cooler, by the way, so my machine is super cold. And um, these voltages are quite low, actually. They're reasonable, considering the overclocking that I'm doing. So this chip is actually a pretty nice one. And uh, under the GPU status, you've got, again, my HD7950 video card running on idle. And uh, the board status shows me here voltage levels, okay, and the fan uh, speed. So that's nice to quickly get information on that. Um, and obviously what I use this for is for logging, so I like to get the minimum, the maximum, uh, the average amount of um, uh, these values. So when it comes to the temperature readings, uh, the voltages, and the fan speed, I can get all of that all in one spot, have it logged. And um, as a test here, what I can do is run Prime95 in the background so you can see quickly how the current temperature of the CPU cores goes from that 14 degrees Celsius all the way up to 41 degrees Celsius on 100% full load. So this gives you a nice idea and you can log it and then use this information later if you need it. So that's one thing that I would recommend using this for and um, definitely harmless, doesn't do anything to your machine and uh, it's very useful. Now under the performance control on the left hand side on that menu, there's the clock voltage option. Okay, the clock voltage option is very handy as well to be able to tweak a few things that you would normally do in the BIOS. So, for example, uh, turbo control, if you want to enable or disable the turbo, which kicks in to give you a little bit of a boost, well, you can enable or disable that from here, adjust the multiplier and so forth. Um, the voltage levels for the CPU or the Northbridge uh, voltage, you can adjust that from here as well. There they are, the two sliders. And um, that's pretty much it right now for this screen. Moving on, on the um, memory performance control, well, that's a different story. The memory has tons of timing controls there and configurations. I mean, if you're not a power user, an enthusiast, and know what you're doing here, you could do some uh, damage, not damage to your memory necessarily, but damage to your machine freezing, locking up, or getting a blue screen of death, basically, which you would have to reboot and reset your settings again. Not a big deal, but you know that's why they're saying, if you're not sure, don't touch it. Um, black memory profiles, this is terrific. If you bought AMD Black Edition memory, you can have that automatically configure itself for you for the optimal settings. Fan control, that's great too if you want to control manually your fans unless of course you're already controlling them outside on your uh, case uh, or within the bias you can uh, adjust the, your fan levels as well through here and uh, the smart profile option is very nice I've got a utility that I like to run 
um, with my CPU at defaults instead of overclocked. So, or the other way around, maybe you've got a game that you want to run overclocked and not at the default. So you can adjust and control that in, in there as well. Benchmarks, well, it does have a little benchmark utility that you can run here. This little tool, I've actually used it in the past when I reviewed the older uh, AMD um, CPU. So you can check out those videos if you're interested to see what those scores were. And this is the score that I'm getting today. So if you download this and install it and you run this um, benchmark utility, which is safe, you'll get your score and you can compare. Under the stability test, I've definitely used this many times to um, stress test the CPU, make sure that it's running stable. I select all of the options and I click on the start button and then just let it run. And uh, sometimes you can let this run for hours, right? And um, make sure that your machine doesn't hang or freeze or whatever. So this is a great way of testing your AMD CPU. Obviously, if it freezes, then you're not optimized. There's something still wrong with your voltage or your memory or something, and you'll need to go back and adjust. Now, auto clock, basically automatically overclocking to the best of its abilities. It has a built-in feature to do that. I usually stay away from this. I've done it in the past. It doesn't give me results that I'm satisfied with, so I like to go into the BIOS and do my uh, manual overclocking as opposed to this, incrementing slowly the clock speed and trying to optimize the memory, the multiplier, and the voltages accordingly. And it will give you sometimes a good, good result, better than maybe what you could do. It all depends, right? It all depends on whether or not you're familiar with that. Now, other than that, under the system information, you can get details here on the manufacturer of your components, details that you, you know, normally wouldn't be able to get quickly. So that's pretty much it. Under the preferences, you can um, enable, you know, how you want uh, the application to start, you know, and have it uh, automatically loaded every time you boot up your machine. You can access the uh, Catalyst Control Center from here, stuff like that. Comment below. Let me know what you think so far. Are you going to download it, install it? What score are you getting? Have you benchmarked at all with this utility before? Again, I'd like to thank um, you guys for subscribing and watching my videos, and enjoy.